There is close to zero instruments that can compare to synthesizers' functionality to create an infinite sonic palette of sounds, textures, and emotions. However, for all its loveliness, playing synth live has both a long history and present of problems, annoyances, and liabilities. These hunks do not take kindly to the abuses of stage and the road, and additionally, since there's not very many people out there playing them, finding a replacement for any issues that do happen is often not even a realistic option. In a world where we need to easily throw gear in and out of dirty vehicles and be yanked and unplugged on stage and be reliably set up and broken down in just a few minutes, most every live keyboardist knows that feeling of plugging everything up at soundcheck and praying that it all turns on this time. So let me show you a setup that I've been building and testing to try at least lessen some of these problems so we can actually focus on playing our instrument and not just be tech support. So here she is, the Wolf's Bane V1. We got fully wireless MIDI connection, three independent lights with wireless DMX, controls mapped to be able to send separate commands to any device hooked up in the ecosystem including laptops and MIDI pedals. It weighs less than 40 pounds. I can set it up in just a minute with a single power cable. It can be disconnected and reconnected at any time and it will immediately work. So let's dig into this. Firstly, how do we make it so it can literally be turned upside down and still work tomorrow? The main structure is actually built around a dual tier keyboard stand, you know, like the Van Halen ones. But instead of putting a second keyboard on it, I use the second tier to be able to lock the entire thing down. So you can pick the entire thing up upside down and nothing falls out. Next, in the stand sits a really big pedal board tray that is heavily velcroed to the stand. And inside the tray lies all the goodies. Firstly, underneath the main keyboard, we have a long light bar with two pieces of industrial foam kind of holding that in. These are here to kind of make the foundation of the keyboard above it, but also add a little bit of shock absorption. And this also makes a little cubby where any wiring is able to be pre-wired, hidden, and safely taped and velcroed in place, including all the power cables and the wireless DMX receiver. Then the next layer, we have the actual keyboard itself, which is an old Novation SL Mark II MIDI controller. And to complete the synth witch, the two arms of the second tier keyboard tray are velcroed to the keyboard and tightly locked in to secure it all. Because we can, let's chuck two more DMX lights onto the stand and strap them in as well and daisy chain the DMX from the other light bar. And then finally just a black power strip velcroed in to power the keyboard and the lights and your bases to vape. So having toured with this guy some, so far he survived being picked up over my head and turned upside down most shows. But no matter what, I'm gonna be real, I can't say I'm not scared of it just not turning on one day. Cause no matter how much we lock all this down, it's still based on a plastic MIDI controller because all MIDI controllers are basically fragile plastic things. What happens when a beer falls in the middle of it or this daddy issues kick in and we go full Trent Reznor on it? But she actually gets to one of the coolest parts of this setup. The only cable we need to actually set up the entire thing is one power cable. This was totally a YOLO Amazon buy that actually worked out really amazingly. All the connection to the host computer is done completely wirelessly and done through these dongles. They're called Witty Masters, like MIDI, but with a W. And it was scarily easy to set up. Literally, you just plug in and out on one device and in and out on the other device, and boom, instant connection. So worst case scenario, if my main keyboard dies, I can literally yoink these boys out of the controller and into another keyboard and keep playing within about five seconds. So any cheap ass MIDI keyboard will work exactly the same as long as it has a five pin MIDI out. And as you might be aware, computers do not really like when you yank out USB devices in the middle of using them. They tend to uh, have problems with that. <laughs> but since we're using old school five pin MIDI, means that this is just plugged in the back of an interface. You can yank these out, it doesn't care. It doesn't know what's connected to it, and if it's receiving data, it receives it. If it's not receiving data, then it ignores it. And according to the Witty Master manual, you can actually have this as a setup where four of these guys get sent to one. So basically you could have four output devices and one receiver. I wasn't able to get that to work. <laughs> um, I'm gonna still, still keep tweaking on it, but I will say just the normal default setup, just one in, one out, where this guy communicates that one and I'm communicating that one because they both have MIDI in and out, work just fine. Now, as far as the computer setup of this goes, it gets a little complicated because I currently run two computers live and I'd rather run zero because computers are fragile, but I have them on the back of the stage. I'm not touching them at all. I have one that is just the backing tracks and lights. So that has our click track and our pedal changes, anything like that. That's like the minimum viable product. I have to have that. So even if my synth computer goes down, that's okay. I'm gonna be grumpy, but we'll make it through the set. And the synth computer just received MIDI and CC commands, as well as program changes from the brain computer with the backing tracks and each of the individual keyboards. However, I need to be able to send something from that synth computer back to the backing track computer. 
because I want to be able to control not just the synthesizers, not just the MIDI notes, not just the CCs. I want to be able to trigger the next sections of the set or pause our backing tracks or do all the kind of interactions for actually starting and stopping the backing tracks from these keyboards as well. So what I actually have is a MIDI out from the synthesizer interface back into the end of the backing track interface. So it's basically this giant circle. But this allows me to do is that any of these devices can interact with either of the two computers and either of the two computers can interact with themselves. I hope there's something cool in here that you can add to your own setup. And I'd love to see what kind of things you guys are doing. I love seeing creative setups with keyboards. It's kind of like a niche thing. So it gets me really excited when I see anybody trying to build something new. So anyway, I'm Baby Wolf. Go make some art.